Good news, everyone! The Chinese have just reported that they've created a new form of COVID in the lab, which is 100% lethal. In unrelated news, reports of lab leaks have never been higher. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. So yes, we've got these two stories, and I'm putting links down in the description below to the articles that I'm referencing here. Uh, but one story uh, says that since COVID, we have a 50% increase in reported lab leaks. Now that's reported lab leaks. That doesn't necessarily mean that we have 50% more lab leaks. Perhaps it's just that uh, reporting standards have gone up, so perhaps more of them are just being reported. But another way of looking at it is that since COVID, the level of scrutiny and shame associated with a lab Having a leak is probably higher, so from that perspective, you might think that people might even be less likely to report a lab leak today versus uh, prior to COVID. That's speculation on my part, but what's not speculation is that reports of lab leaks are 50% higher than they were prior to COVID, which in all likelihood leaked out of a lab. So people are doing great with that. You know, keep on doing what you're doing. I love it. Uh, and then you get this other story where the Chinese have been continuing to kind of shuffle uh, things around. And I don't want to just uh, shine a spotlight just on the Chinese. This is an issue going on all over the world in all sorts of different countries. But in this case, it's the Chinese saying that they have uh, mixed uh, pangolin uh, blood, like viruses that they uh, collected from a pangolin and they've uh, been growing those viruses in a lab. And it seems like this wasn't intentional on their, their part where they weren't in intending to create this, although it's kind of unclear in the report whether it was intentional or not, and if it was intentional, maybe you wouldn't want to necessarily advertise that. But through one set of circumstances or another, uh, they've generated this uh, virus, which uh, when tested against humanized mice, and what humanized mice means is that they are mice who have been genetically altered to have uh, human-like brain receptors up in their brain so that they will more uh, accurately reflect what would happen to a human if this virus got into humans. So this is being uh, tested on mice and in their tests, 100% of the mice that were exposed to this virus uh, died of this virus. Uh, the virus is related uh, to COVID. It's a, a variant of SARS-CoV-2, uh, so it is a, another coronavirus. It seems that this is another uh, disease that can be spread through uh, respiration uh, because the virus was uh, expressing itself uh, heavily in the, the lungs and respiratory system of these mice. The progression of the disease uh, looked as follows. Uh, mice were exposed and then there seemed like there was somewhere around like a, a three-day uh, amplification period where the virus was amplifying itself in the mice's body, that means like creating more of itself, where they weren't feeling any symptoms. I, you know, you don't necessarily know what mice are feeling, but they weren't exhibiting the sense that they were, uh, you know, feeling symptoms. Uh, by about day three, it seems like there was enough virus load in their respiratory system that they could become infectious, but it wasn't until day five where they seemed like they uh, started to succumb to symptoms. So between day three and day five, it seems like, for the mice anyway, there was the potential for asymptomatic spreading, where they had about a day or two where they could be spreading this disease to other mice uh, where they, you know, they wouldn't necessarily know that they were sick yet, you know, if they were a human being. Uh, at around day five, they start feeling it, and then by day seven or eight, they're dead. Kills them pretty quickly. Within about a week, uh, you're dead after contracting this. And again, this is a 100% fatality rate in mice, humanized mice. Uh, another issue with this study, although I, I don't think the CDC would see this as being an issue, uh, I, I see it as being an issue, is that there were not very many uh, subjects, there were not very many mice in this experiment uh, as it was described in the paper, which again is linked down in the description below. It was under a dozen mice. Uh, for me personally, I don't think that that, uh, that is not statistically a large enough number to really draw a percentage like 100% if you wanted to extrapolate that out to a larger population. Again, the CDC would disagree with me on that because I know that there were at least one of the vaccine boosters the CDC approved and allowed to be released into the public. It had only been uh, tested on like a handful of mice, I think under a dozen mice. Uh, so apparently this is not too small of a number from the CDC's perspective, but I think for myself, for me to think that that is absolutely a 100% kill rate, you would want to see more than under a dozen data points on that. Hold on. There is another issue with this study that I realized I did not mention while I was recording the video earlier. And this is actually pretty important. And that is that the study has not been peer reviewed. 
Now, for something to be peer reviewed, it's not just a simple matter of people crossing some T's and dotting some I's. There can be real legitimate issues that are found in research when it is peer reviewed. We saw examples of this during COVID where there were statements that were made by researchers that had financial stakes in things. Their research was not allowed to be peer reviewed either because they said there wasn't enough time or there was proprietary information or whatever the circumstance was, there was a lot of information that was digested and accepted by the public before it had the opportunity to be peer reviewed and we saw what happened as a result of that. The peer review process is very important, it's a critical part of science and this study has not gone through that process yet. It may in the future and if it does and the findings hold up then they'll be much more credible but at this point this is an unpeer reviewed study. Let's go back to the video. But I think what is inarguable is that the kill rate with this particular virus that has been created by the Chinese is higher than the incredibly low fatality rate of COVID. COVID was very problematic for certain types of people, uh, you know, people who were already ill, people who were, uh, who were elderly, but COVID wasn't very dangerous for, you know, the vast majority of the population. This virus looks different. And in this video, what I wanted to talk about is the idea of preparing for things ahead of time. This is something that I think a lot of preppers don't do. A lot of preppers aren't really into prepping for things. Uh, you know, the majority of people that I see here, you know, on YouTube anyway, that are into prepping are into more like reacting to whatever seems like, whatever situation we seem like we're on the absolute cusp of. What's like a word? I guess you wouldn't be a prepper at that point, you'd be a reactor. Uh, and here on Praxis Prepper, we are more about prepping for things. And now is the time to prep for the next pandemic. Uh, you know, the last pandemic, you know, just happened and historically pandemics seem to come through at about a rate of like once every hundred years or so. But I see no reason why that rate would necessarily uh, flow into the future. And that's just a statistical probability kind of thing. You, know, you can have two of these things happen right on the back of each other. They're just statistically unlikely to happen. But on top of that, we have a different set of scenarios right now where you know, there is a higher potential for pandemic diseases like that to come out because it's not, we're not just depending on nature to create these horrifying things for us. Now, you know, we've got the Chinese and, you know, other, uh, I was going to say bioweapon labs because it seems like what this is, but, uh, you know, that, that's disparaging. Other scientific research facilities, uh, you know, around the world in many, many countries that are toying with this kind of thing and making it more likely that, you know, one of these lab leaks, and again, we have a 50% increase in lab leaks reported since COVID, one of these lab leaks is going to create, you know, and release another pandemic, uh, you know, on the world. And now's the time to prepare for that. I know for, uh, for COVID, I was not prepared for COVID. I was prepared for a pandemic, but I wasn't prepared for COVID because COVID was a different type of pandemic than I was preparing for. I was preparing, like many preppers, for the type of pandemic that we've seen in films, where there is this horrifying virus that, you know, releases out into the world, and your essential reaction to that is to just not go out into it, and if you must, have extreme precautions if you do so. COVID wasn't that. You know, COVID wasn't a black or white situation. And I know most people are really uncomfortable with shades of gray area. In fact, with COVID, the situation was that people, uh, you know, bifurcated into these two groups where one, one group, and this was like mainstream, uh, you know, were saying things like COVID is the most deadly disease in the history of humankind. You know, that, that it was like, it, you know, it couldn't be worse than COVID. And then in the other group, you had people that were saying, oh, yeah, it's not even real. Viruses aren't even real. It's all just a big hoax. So you had these, uh, you know, society kind of bifurcated into these two different sides because people are really uncomfortable with the gray in the middle. They want something to be all black or all white. And, you know, that's not usually the way things are. And that's certainly not the way that COVID was. COVID was something that, you know, from my perspective, it's certainly not something that you would want to get. Because, uh, I mean, who wants to even get a mild cold? And COVID was, you know, particularly, uh, you know, aggressive, uh, uncomfortable cold to get. You know, who would really want to get that? But at the same time, it wasn't so dangerous for the vast majority of the population. Uh, it wasn't so dangerous that, you know, you're just gonna be hiding in your house and never go out into it. So it was this weird gray zone that, you know, a lot of people, again, felt uncomfortable with. So they either wanted to, you know, jump and say, it's the worst thing that's ever happened, or it's like, it doesn't even exist. You know, it's that gray zone that people were uncomfortable with. And that gray zone was something I wasn't really prepared for. Who knows what the next pandemic is going to be like? I think it's likely that the next pandemic is not going to wait another hundred years, especially with, you know, uh, 
research into these things increasing and the, you know, the potential for lab leaks increasing and a documented rate of lab leaks that is increasing, I don't think we're gonna have to wait you know, another 100 years for another one of these situations. And the next situation may not be as gray as COVID was. The next situation might be one of those pandemics like what a lot of us preppers were prepping for where it is something so horrible, like, I don't know, for example, a 100% kill rate that uh, you know can spread for a day or two asymptomatically throughout a population through the air, through respiration. You know, the next pandemic could be something like that. And now is the time to prepare for that type of thing. Think about all the issues that you had during COVID that related to, you know, supply chain issues. I know that personally, I had some issues because the preps that I had prepared for COVID were the types of preps that you would have if you weren't planning on going out very much. And that wasn't the type of pandemic that COVID was. You were still going out. So I ran out of certain types of preps, like uh, certain types of respirators, specifically uh, child size respirators, because, uh, well, it was actually kind of foolish on my part. I, I had lots of respirators. I had lots of child size respirators. But at some point prior to COVID, you know, when I, respirators aren't just for, you know, disease. They're for, like, if you're working and there's a lot of, like, wood dust or rock dust or, uh, you know, or... Uh, you know, poop dust or whatever. If you're working in a dirty environment, like cleaning out a chicken coop or something, it's, I think it's a wise idea to wear a respirator so you're not having particles of chicken poop go into your lungs. So, uh, you know, respirators are useful for all sorts of things. And my child size respirator box happened to be the one that was open that I accidentally opened once and I was just using these and they, they worked well enough. You know, they, they, you know, they were a little small on my face, but it's like, uh, I'm not gonna go bother trying to open up another box, this is fine. And I used up most of them before my boy was even born. And I kind of forget about that and then fast forward to COVID and we're in the situation where we want to go out and I find out, oh, you know, I actually kind of like used up all my respirators through years of doing construction work and stuff. I'll just get some more child size respirators. Well, you couldn't during COVID, but now you can. And that's the idea of prepping and preparedness. You do stuff when you seem crazy to do this stuff. You get ready for rain when the sun's shining. You get ready for drought when it's raining. That's the easiest time to take care of all this stuff. And right now is a really easy time to take care of all this stuff. You can get respirators, you can get medications. Uh, and these are all the types of things that are going to be in really short supply if and when, when there is another pandemic. So now is the time to get that stuff. When people think that you're crazy. And the people that think that you're crazy at this point to get ready for the next pandemic are gonna be both all the norms, all the norms that were like, COVID's the worst thing that's ever happened in the entire history of humankind. Those people are gonna think you're crazy. And all the crazy preppers that went into the, oh, viruses are just imaginary and like you know, the whole thing's just a hoax. All those people are gonna think you're crazy as well. So um, at this point, it's never been a less socially acceptable time <laughs> to get ready for the next pandemic. You know, everybody's gonna think that you're crazy, but now's really an important time to do it. What are the types of things that you feel were difficult during COVID. What are other types of pandemic situations that could arise? Because like I said, COVID was a pandemic that, you know, it was different from the one that I had imagined. Try to imagine different types of pandemic scenarios. And I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the description below. What are different scenarios that you could imagine that are kind of different than like the Hollywood movie? It could be that, but it could be something different as well. So think about all the different variants that a disease out outbreak could you know, manifest as, what could that look like? And, you know, I think it's very likely we're gonna see another event like this for so many different reasons. Uh, you know, we have environmental reasons where people are going into areas and clearing areas and interacting with nature in ways that they hadn't before, where people are messing with things in the laboratory, where lab leaks are up. I think it's really likely that we're gonna see more of this stuff in the near term. What are the things that you think that you should get? Here are some things that I uh, have made sure that I am stocking up on. One respirators, <laughs> making sure I have respirators for myself and for my family. Uh, you know, other things that were in short supply during the pandemic were things like, uh, you know, medical, uh, you know, medications and things like that. There were, you know, shortages on lots of things. And, uh, you know, that is something that you could stock up on ahead of time. Uh, one thing, and I, I don't talk about it much on my channel, I am an affiliate for them, uh, where if you, you know, use the links down in my description below, you know, I get like a, some kind of like little percentage. Um, you know, that being the case, because, I, you know, I'm not really like a, like a salesman, I, you know, you don't hear uh, from me about this a lot on my channel. But I do think it's really important is getting medications ahead of time. And Jace Medical is a company that you can get that stuff through. I have, you know, placed plenty of orders myself using my own money through them to get things like antibiotics, which, you know, have been in short supply with supply chain issues. Antibiotics are things that were being used during COVID because even if you get a viral infection, you can get secondary bacterial infections that, uh, you know, arise after that fact. And 
you know, there ain't nothing like antibiotics when you need an antibiotic. So that's a really important thing to stock up on ahead of time. So, you know, N95 masks, respirators, you know, things like, uh, you know, emergency uh, medications. Yeah, you know, I'm going to put the links down in the description below to all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, sanitary things like hand sanitizer. Uh, you know, that was something that, uh, at least at the very beginning of the pandemic, was diff uh, difficult to get. You know, they were able to ramp up production of that relatively quickly, uh, unlike the N95 masks. It took a long time for the production of those to ramp up. I know other things that uh, uh, took a while for production to wrap up on uh, were things like UVC lights. UVC lights are something that uh, we used through the uh, pandemic and we still continue to use them today on bringing things into the house just as an extra way of kind of sanitizing things. You know, it was difficult to get UVC bulbs. Now would be the time to build a UVC sterilizer and I've got a video got multiple videos on that, but here's a link to one specific video where I talk about how I put together my UV sterilizer. Think about all the different types of things that you would need during a pandemic. And that includes all like the basic stuff that are good for any kind of an emergency event, like, you know, like food and fuel and those types of things. You know, think about the things that you would want to have during the next pandemic and get them now because, you know, so often is the case, even with preppers, you know, we're all just reacting to things like whatever seems like we're at the 11th hour, like, oh, this crisis is just about to happen. So I'm going to, you know, take care of that or that crisis is about to happen. So I'm going to take care of that. You know, think about the stuff well in advance. In my opinion, if you don't look crazy, <laughs> you're not doing prepping right, because the whole point is that you're, you know, you're doing the stuff related to rain when the sun's shining and you're doing stuff related to the sun shining when it's raining. And, uh, you know, that's that's how you do it the easy way. That's how you have easy access to stuff, uh, you know, when nobody else seems to want it. And, you know, the result of that is everybody's going to think that you're crazy. But you and I know better. That's it. Good luck. Check the article, uh, the link below. If you want to hear a video uh, specifically about this new wonderful virus that the uh, Chinese have created, um, Dr. John Campbell has a wonderful channel, uh, you know, a wonderful resource all, all through COVID and on other sorts of topics as well. I'll put a link down in the description below to his description, uh, you know, of the situation that's unfolding in China right now. But even if that specific virus is not what ends up leaking out of the lab, and there's no reason why that's any more or less likely than any of the others, uh, you know, at some point there's going to be something else because constantly there are mistakes happening over and over and over again. That's why I'm wary about things you know, like these kind of, these bio, uh, you don't want to call them bioweapons labs because that's disparaging, but they're labs that make things that could be used as weapons, uh, you know, and also other things like nuclear energy. Uh, nuclear energy is another one of those things that sounds great in theory until you get people involved and, you know, people make mistakes, people get lazy, people want to save money. You know, I used to live near a nuclear power plant and I didn't have any real problems with nuclear power plants until I lived near one and realized, oh, this is being run by human beings that are, you know, as fallible as anybody else. There's always mistakes that happen whenever humans are involved in anything. And it's just wise to prepare for that because mistakes aren't, mistakes aren't a possibility when humans are in the mix. Mistakes are an inevitability. And that's why we prep. Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another one that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.